Good morning from my local canal. It is windy as hell. I was meant to be going on the river, but um, I just get blown away. I don't know whether you can hear it. You probably can on the GoPro, but it's really, really windy. We're here. It's just approaching seven o'clock. I've got my uh, my pike baits in. So fingers crossed we might have uh, one or two fish again, hopefully. But we'll see. But it was just too windy on the river to start fishing because uh, I just couldn't keep my rods in the water they just kept getting blown out but uh, it's still very windy here but it's sheltered considering what the river was like well good morning from uh, down the canal I've got me two pike baits in we've got one with a lamprey eel section on and we've got one with a smelt on both on the bottom both on floats because I love a seeing a float going under but it is really really windy and uh, there's just no chance that I've, I could have uh, stayed on the river uh, I couldn't keep the the bait straight especially on the Patinosta dead roach the wind was just pulling it out of position so next best thing let's uh, go down my local canal and see if we can catch a few kippers and uh, that's what we're doing so fingers crossed one of them rods will go and uh, we'll have a nice fish on Wait with a pike let's hit this one yes Ooh. it's a nice little fella it's only a small fish but our first pike of the session oh and it's just spat out me I can't see where the hooks are exactly so we better net it that was quick can't see a flying treble anywhere there we go a nice little canal pike still very lively there we go a lovely small canal pike it's not in bad condition this one it's been feeding well so it's the uh, nice start to the session that's our first pike so not too bad right let's get this one back in let's get rebaited and let's get another one out there this one took the uh, lamprey eel section which ain't bad is it but boy is it windy <laughs> there we go a nice pristine Canal Pike, just over five pounds, liking a lamprey section. I'll have to put another one of those on. Well, look in there, all them teeth, 700, all curving backwards. And there's the eye, they can see the prey, nice big eye, characteristic of predators. All right, let's get you back. Yeah, so what we're resting, what we're doing now is we're just resting her in the uh, landing net because she's not ready to go yet. So, but she's a nice fish, nice to see that there's a few still left in here. Yeah, she's just getting a, a bearings and then uh, she'll be off. But boy, is it windy. Look at the markings on her, absolutely adorable. Yeah, you can see now that uh, the bottom of her body is sinking down to the bottom. So she's uh, nearly ready to go. But yeah, nice fish to start the session. Right, my pike is now ready to be released. As you can see, she's got plenty of energy now. So we're just gonna... There we 
to go. Into the depths of the canal. Right, so these are the uh, the baits we're using today. Good old lamprey eel section there, and good old smelts. Can't beat these baits. They're really nice and smelly, and they're uh, really good for pike because the pike absolutely adore them. These are the smelts. I've got these in extra large. There we go. There's two frozen there together. They're a very good bait, and the lamprey eel section is very bloody, and you get them and they're cut in half and you get about 10 baits with that so that's absolutely perfect especially when the uh, the pike are feeding so it's not too bad at all is it really that's how blustery it is today really bad just trying to keep your baits in especially on the river it's uh, very very difficult There's my pike float. I do like uh, watching a float go under. It's really, really quite exciting because you don't know whether it's going to be that five pounder that I hooked or it's going to be a bigger fish. Uh, there's not too many big fish left in here now, but there are one or two double figure fish, which are still quite nice. So, and there's my other pike float just there quite close together but you know I, I do like it like that and then they've got a choice and then of course we've got the canal running all the way down there to the river so there we go that was a nice start wasn't it a nice five pounder so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to rebait with another piece of lamprey eel section I'm going to put it in the same position again and uh, see if there's a bigger fish waiting there there could be and let's hope there is but if there isn't we can always try a leaping frog down so let's go and put another bait in right now There we go, a nice piece of lamprey eel section going to be cast out again. Can't beat this bait, it's a nice bloody bait, looks ugly but it's a good attractor for some pike. But as you can hear the wind is absolutely terrible. Right so we're going to try and hit that same position again if we can. just about there put it down here then we'll put the the clutch on just in case I do miss the float go and then the line will pay out but you should always be watching your floats anyway which I am I'm in close proximity here and oh the wind is absolutely terrible I haven't got a proper muffler for my GoPro when it's on my head and oh absolutely terrible Yeah, so the uh, the gear I'm using is a uh, Zeppelin float from Drennan. I think they're the best floats you can get for piking. They're really nice, look nice and uh, slim, and they've got very good visibility. 18 inch wire trace with two size 6 treble hooks. And the rods are just some old carp rods that I've had since I was 16, and they're still doing me well. With 15 pound line, and that's on both rods. The only difference is I've got a smelt on this one and I've got a lamp rail on this one. But can you hear that wind? Really bad. So hopefully, if we're staying around this area here, there's fish around this area, so we should be able to catch a few. Well, we've been in about an hour now and uh, no other fish have taken. I've seen one or two splashes just downstream so I think what I'll do is I'll probably give it another hour here or something like that and then move down there. It's always best when you're uh, pike fishing to keep mobile and moving up and down. 
just to find a few feeding fish really but uh, yeah it's not the best of conditions but you know we've had one they all count five pounds it goes onto my list for the year so hopefully we uh, might get a bigger one right we've uh, just moved upstream now so I'm just gonna cast my bait it's just in the middle again and it's still very breezy I'm gonna put one over there and then I'm gonna put one just over here Hardly cast me bait. Actually, it's got a little bit of uh, something on there. That's it. Set that off. Don't want that on. There we go. I'll just lay that one there on the floor. I can see the float. We'll move to the next rod with my smelt on. See what sort of depth we've got here. Oh, we've got a nice depth there as well. There we go. Let's uh, see if we can get any runs from this section here. Yeah, so here in this swim, it's uh, probably round about four feet deep here. It's probably a little bit deeper in that bay just over there. So we'll try here and uh, see if we can get anything. But we'll give it a couple of hours here and then I've got to go to work. But hopefully we'll, uh, we might catch something. I spend round about depending on how it goes two hours in a swim so fingers crossed uh, we might get that one in here if we don't I'll go home well I'm happy with one fish so it's a bite but you can see how windy it is well sadly that's no more pike for me today but I only had four hours and uh, I've caught one pike five pound so that's not too bad is it it's better than a blank so if you've liked this short video please like and subscribe in another couple of weeks so I'll see you all again and thanks for watching